That's right, Jezebel just released an article about Manny Emue's new video where he opened up, got vulnerable, owned up to his mistakes, and discussed what it's like to be canceled. But Jezebel seems to think that cancel culture doesn't really exist. And this is definitely something that we need to talk about. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community or pop culture, try to see what lessons we can learn from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And yes, um, I just made a video about Manny MUA's video about being canceled. I said it was gonna be a two-parter, but I don't know if I'm gonna do the second part. <laughs> the reaction's been pretty good, I think, but I saw this Jezebel article and I wanted to discuss it. So those of you who don't know, hi, my name's Chris. I was canceled earlier this year. I actually just released a book called Canceled Inside YouTube Cancel Culture, where I share my story, but I also analyze different stories in the YouTube community, like Dramageddon with Manny MUA, stuff with James Charles, Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, a bunch of stuff. But if you wanna get a deep dive look into cancel culture and kind of from an analytical point of view, check out the book. It's an ebook and an audio book. It's always linked down in the description, down in the pinned comment below. All right, so yeah, um, somebody shared this, arg uh, this article with me uh, from Jezebel. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I was reading this article, I'm like, this is, this is a pretty good article, you know what I mean? And then, and then it got to the end, all right? Like, I'm only gonna talk about the end first. It just kind of like summarizes what happened to Manny and his comeback. But then you get the opinion of the author at the bottom. I'm like, hoo hoo girl, oh, we need to have a talk. So the article ends by saying, there's a fine line, of course, between genuine cruelty and criticisms. A better use of Manny MUA's time would be to establish how others could find redemption like he did, because as the rest of us are well aware, cancel culture doesn't really exist. Most scandals just fuel their creators' brands, and judging by the 638,000 views Manny MUA has ranked in in the last few months, his vlogs have received roughly half of that, he's on to something. So this is not once, but twice today, I've heard people say cancel culture doesn't really exist. And this is mind blowing. We have had, we have seen multiple suicides and whether you wanna call it cancel culture or public shaming, whichever thing you wanna call it, it is something that happens and affects the psyche. So one of the most ridiculous things is, is to even bring up like still getting views. Like that is just, such a, a silly thing to, to think. Like, like I've talked about in recent videos, the psychological damage of public shaming, right? We no longer do public shaming in the United States because people said it's worse than death, all right? That's how much it messes you up. But like Manny, in his video, he discusses, imagine a thousand people lined up to talk to you and just each one comes up and just says something terrible to you. All right, and a thousand is a low number for someone like Manny MUA. But just because you're getting views or just because your business is still up and running, like if you have somebody giving you money on this side or your business is making money over here, and then you have thousands of people over here just telling you that you're the most god awful, worst human being ever for a mistake that you made, like it doesn't, it doesn't balance out. You know what I mean? Like, oh, who cares? Who cares about them? They have they have money and views. They're, they're still fine, right? Like, it's about the attacks that come, okay? And here's the thing, and here, here's where I get frustrated, all right? And obviously this is something that I'm passionate about because I went through it. And there, there are a bunch of false narratives that people are trying to sell you about what cancel culture is, what cancel culture isn't, and things like that. One of the biggest lies that they try to sell you is anybody who's being canceled or has been canceled is just playing the victim and has no remorse and refuses to own up to their mistakes, right? Like if you watch Manny MUA's video, he takes accountability, he takes responsibility, right? You even look back to when he made his apology videos. But as we all know, when anybody comes out with an apology, 
right? Everybody cuts it apart and they say, you're not really sorry, all right? Think about that. Now, in his video, he owned up and he's taken a lot of time to go to therapy. He's been doing a lot of personal development to become a better person. But the lie they try to tell you is, this person doesn't wanna take any accountability, any responsibility. They won't own up to anything they did. In the last 24 hours, um, I've gotten hit with a wave of just ignorant comments and things like that, saying the same thing. So I understand what this is like. Like in my book, Cancelled, if you end up getting a copy, over 12 or 1300 people got a free copy in the last month and a half because I was doing it for free. But anyways, anybody who read that book saw that there were dozens of times in that book where I talk about how big of a screw up I was, how my ego got the best of me, all the missteps I took, how I thought I was invincible and things like that. I, I take so much, so many shots at myself throughout that book. So to hear people, hear someone else tell them what my book really says and that I haven't owned up to anything is absolutely mind blowing. Like I said, like it is a lie that you are being sold because here's the thing. One of the ways that mob mentality and cancel culture gets its ball rolling, this snowball effect is by people not being independent thinkers. It's by people not doing their own research and looking into it. They'll read an article like this or they'll watch a video by someone else without watching it themselves or reading it themselves and saying, oh, this person says they didn't take any responsibility. I should just believe that, right? But here's the thing. One of the things that makes cancel culture, cancel culture is the punishment does not fit the crime, all right? There is absolutely no spectrum. This is what makes cancel culture, cancel culture, all right? I screwed up, Manny screwed up, people like James Charles screwed up, other people I've been covering, like Pro Jared has screwed up. A lot of people have screwed up, but again, the punishment does not fit the crime. One of the best analogies I can give you is look at, look at, marijuana convictions, right? Someone get, getting busted for a little bit of weed before we started to legalize it in you know, states like my own in Nevada and things like that. But think about people who got busted for a little bit of weed, all right? A non-violent drug offense because weed is illegal, right? And this can ruin the rest of their life by having a record, it can hurt their employment and everything like that. Like, did that punishment fit the crime Think about that for a second. And if you're somebody who's really anti-weed or anti-drug, let's, let's talk about this. Let's say you were going 10 miles over the speed limit, all right, and they put you in jail for a month. The punishment does not fit the crime. And the problem is, is that the court of public opinion thinks that mob justice is better than the actual judicial system, right? Like, I, I personally feel that our justice system is extremely flawed. But the reality is I would take it every single time over mob justice because when you get people together with groupthink and the contagion of spreading ideas with no ind independent thinking and everything, like people get crazy and they're completely irrational, all right? So like that's what what bothers me is when people see someone like Manny MUA trying to become a better person and like he discusses in his video, like there's just this lack of forgiveness and things like that. Like I always say, just, just real quick, just ask yourself like, would you wanna be forgiven? Like when we talk about the spectrum of this thing, all right, like, does Manny deserve to have the rest of his life or career ruined because he was a bad friend? Right? I don't even have to use quotations. He was a bad friend. I've been a bad friend too, right? But does that mean someone's career should be ruined? Or like when you look in the beauty industry, when you talk about social climbers, like, like really like gauge that for a second. Like when you sit down logically and look at this stuff and the crime, the crime, right? Which is a moral crime <laughs> that someone committed is it really valid to say that this person should no longer have a platform and they should just go away and never be around again, right? Like, doesn't that seem a little silly? The last thing that I wanna say is this. Like, with people saying cancel culture doesn't exist, it's kind of like what I mentioned 
in my last video about what happened to Alec Holoka is this. The same people who are saying cancel culture doesn't exist, these are the same people who fight for social justice, right? Like the same people who swear they're mental health advocates are going to shame people with mental illnesses if they have a mental illness. If you have a mental illness I don't like, then no, go away. But the people who say cancel culture don't exist, I guarantee those are the same people who get enraged when people say things like white privilege don't exist, misogyny don't exist, uh, doesn't exist, racism doesn't exist, right? These are all things that do exist. Now, is it something that explains what happened 100% of the time? No, but those things do exist. Yes, it's sad to say that it's 2019 and racism, sexism, homophobia, all these things still exist, right? And I would never tell somebody that these things don't exist. But seeing those same people start to say cancel culture doesn't exist, here's my theory as to why they say that, all right? Because to admit cancel culture exists means they would have to admit that they have joined in the irrational hate mob, right? And nobody wants to admit that. Everybody is the hero of their own story. Everybody wants to sell themselves the lie that this person deserves every single bit of the hatred that they're getting, right? We turn into these complete animals when we join part of the hate mob. So anyways, like I'm going to be doing more videos about this. I've been reading a lot of books on like social psychology and things like that, but this is something that like I just cannot express enough. Like you might be next. All right, even if you're not a YouTuber, even if you're not a public figure, this can happen to anybody. Maybe it happens at your job. Maybe it happens at your school. This is why you need to care about this subject. Cancel culture does not discriminate, all right? One day you're part of the hate mob and the next day the hate mob is coming after you. So please start caring about this subject, all right? But again, like I said, my brand new book, Canceled Inside YouTube, Cancel Culture is out now. If you wanna check it out, down in the description, down in the pinned comment down below. But anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel in other ways, like getting my books, like Canceled, or Rewire Your Anxiety and all that, or who get my merch, like this shirt with a, a picture of my adorable little kitty Maya on it. All right. But anyways, thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.